Hopefully that was good for a little break too from the monotony of, of lecturing. To me, the recipient side creation is the funnest thing I do, and I love doing it because it really, it, it really is an expression of, of design and artistry. Um, we measure from the first five centimeter segment how many graphs of how many sizes we're going to get, and from that I have a paint that I can choose to design and paint into a certain area. And when we start doing the actual uh, the workshop, you're going to start to see, this is what I did actually for the first year of practice. I did repeated recipient sites on these melons every single day. Um, and it helps you start to get good at it. And let's say you want to do 25 per kilo units per square centimeter. We'll measure a square centimeter and see if you can put 25 unit, fill your units in there. Let's say if you want to do 35, can you do that? If you want to do 45, can you do that? Can you do it consistently? Let's say you want to cover this much of an area because that's how big the crown is, and you've got 1,200 graphs. Can you make that 1,200 graphs fit in, a pat in that pattern so you don't run out and you're halfway through going, oh, I'm, that's it? Or you put so many that now you don't know what, you know, you've spilled over somewhere else, you miscalculate. So these are things that are part of the, the training that as you design, you'll get better and better at it. I'm gonna watch, uh, my, 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 the faculty will watch your hands and, and decide how you're doing as well in terms of angle and direction, which we'll discuss here. Yes, I use the same slides over and over again because I want you to see this. The idea is that our head has different topographies and that hair grows uniquely differently in each of those areas and how you create the recipient sites are going to dictate how the graphs grow. And if you make the recipient sites in a density pattern and, and an angle and a direction that's off, the hairs will not grow right. So it's very, very important that your recipient sites look good. Again, I show you this box slide, and it's helpful for you to understand this in terms of the angles. And once again, I show you this slide here, which is if you look, there's different angles. So what are the, the summary of some of these angles? For the hairline, you can almost not go too low because Especially if you're making parallel sides, it could slide up a little bit. If you make the, the front hairline too high, you can see where the graphs insert, and they can look done. And also, they minimize, it, it actually does not look dense enough because when you catch your, your recipient sides at a low angle here, there is greater density because they create a, an awning, like a, like a shingling effect over the scalp. And so the whole point of your hairs are because they're supposed to cover baldness or bald scalp. And so if you have less see-through because the angles are low, it looks more natural and it gets, provides better coverage. The crown, which we'll talk about uh, more specifically in my next lecture, the angles are actually much higher in my opinion. And so that's a, a counterpoint and there's a whirl. And in the temples, the angles are super flat. And so these are things that are very, very important to understand those esoteric elements. I also now principally use bent needles, uh, and I usually use 18, 19, 20, sometimes 21, 23, but you know, the main thing is how do you, you know, what size si sites would you make? You know, the limiting factor is not you. I can make a site using a 23 or 25 gauge needle, but if your assistant team can't place into that and they traumatize the graphs during insertion and the graphs don't fit, you're gonna have a horrible result. So it's really your staff, also the, obviously the patient's uh, type of hair, is it going to fit, fit the site? But my staff can place into very small sites. If your staff cannot place into small sites, and that's normal, most sites, most staff cannot. And when you're starting out, you want to make large sites because it's easier to place into and you want to make sure, but those sites are not so large, the graphs don't fit and they slide in and that's a problem. So, but aim toward larger sites to start. Um, and my, what I found in, with FUE, at least, is the graphs are so fragile, we've, we've had to use slightly larger sites so the graphs grow better. When they're too, too tight, sometimes uh, the graphs get a little bit strangulated, there's a little more trauma during insertion, and the graph growth is not as consistent. To get that low angle that we talk about in the hairline, you really want the, the patient in a supine position. And the reason for that, if you think about it, when the person is lying down, your hand is going to go naturally low. Picture them sitting up you're going to have to really, it's hard for you to maintain that consistent low angle, but when they're lying down facing up, it's very easy to make, your hand is in a naturally, natural position to make recipient sites that are low angled, okay? Conversely, when I work with a crowd, oftentimes the patient's sitting higher up because I want the angles to be higher. Again, 
I will explain that in the Crown Lecture, at least my opinion about why I think the, the angle should be higher. But it's easier to do that when the patient is sitting, sitting higher up. Concepts is we want to create density gradients that really impact the patient well. The central forelock, where my fist is, or the extended central forelock, which is here, can often be a very powerful area to fill and with higher, stronger graphs, greater density, larger size graphs, because when that area looks thin, the patient looks bald. So that's an area that is an area that you would, should think about in terms of design work. You already heard from Shelley and from Ken that there are different ways to make recipient sites. And the, I, I actually have gone through all of these and sometimes I mix them up. Now I pretty much mix a parallel and perpendicular sites. Uh, and I'll tell you why when I actually show you some pattern designs I've made. Because it's sometimes easier to have a real life uh, actual drawing, I mean real life case scenario to show you what I do. The parallel sites is just to repeat this, the benefit is that they flow so that there's less transection with, with hairs if you're going between graphs. In my opinion, some people can do very good uh, sites where there's very low transaction with perpendicular sites. I believe there's a less transaction rate when you're doing parallel sites. The perpendicular sites, you get, get to control the angle better and you oftentimes get potentially greater visual density. And the reason for that is, let's, take, let's say it's a three hair graph. That's really oftentimes how I use coronals. If the graphs are sh hanging over the, sh the scalp so they create a better shadow like this, it's better this way than when they're angled this way. Now remember, always the curl is going to go down, but they can get pinched sagittally so that they're, not, they're going to be more compressed going this way so there's less of the shadow effect on the scalp. So that's why perpendicular sometimes can be beneficial in certain ways. And I'll use them in, in different ways for maximal advantage and I'll show you that in a moment. The micro punch, um, I found that sometimes there's a little bit of vascular compromise or could be variable growth. I use the micro punch now principally for scars, areas where I need to get more vascular supply because the scar tissue is poor. I want to get deep into the vascular supply, get a little bit of bleeding back, and also vis vi visibly reduce the size of the scar, for example, uh, transplanting into a, a donor scar. We use the words angle, direction, and tilt often, and we don't, it's, hard, it's important to, to describe what they mean. The angle refers to the anterior uh, posterior direction or, or going this way. So a low angle means that vis-a-vis -vis the scalp is going to be low this direction, forward, okay? The direction is a lateral splay of the recipient side going left to right, okay? The tilt is an esoteric thing. It's going this way, but it's really something that lies beyond the scope of this, this, this discussion. But the, just remember angles and directions. The directions are left to right, angles are low and high. Okay, and that's the, and each site you make is going to have a distinct angle and a distinct direction. To show you some hairlines uh, that I've done here, you can see that these are all sagittal sites with a very, you can see through that with a very straight macro hairline, but it's further regularized with these little tiny uh, sentinel hairs, which are the hairs that stick out in the, in the free floating and also irregularized. And you want to constantly irregularize the hairline as you build it. So how do you do that? Well, first, this is a stepwise uh, procedure. This is drawing the first hairline, then making a little uh, snail trail that uh, you, uh, I think Martin's called it. It's just a little bit of a, a regular line. Then I go in there with the two hair graphs, and I further regularize it even beyond what that, that is there. Uh, then I come back with one hair graphs, and I further regularize it, and then add those sentinel hairs. So then I really try to frame and, dis and make that, that hairline first, because it's a priority zone. Then I come back with two and three hair graphs, and further uh, strengthen that hairline from behind, and that's generally how I make the, the hairline. The, other, the, the point of this slide is to show you that when you go into any point of the scalp, there's no abrupt transitions. In other words, you don't get a hair going from here all of a sudden over there. When you make a recipient site, everything should flow like this. From If you think about the crown, where the whirl is, it goes up, and then goes over to the lateral humps, and then goes down, and then the temple maybe bends back a little bit. The, all the, when you go up to the hairline, it goes forward straight. And the hairline, this is a, a really important thing, is when you're designing the hairline, the recipient side should go straight. There's a very, you, you can read in textbooks about a radial design. But the radial design can look artificial. It can, have, it can almost book leave open and have more see-through effect. If anything, today what I do is I actually take those angles and converge them in a little bit toward the midline. 
so that if you think about how the scalp topography is like this, opened up like this, if you angle your graphs a little bit in, then as the hair falls out, it's still falling inwards toward the central forelock, which is where you want your, your greater density to, to, to lie. So you want your angles almost converge in a little bit. And as you get to the temple, that's when you start to sweep downwards. This is to show you a different temple design where I'm using actually coronal sites in the temple. In other words, going this direction vis-a-vis uh, -vis where the slide is there to make those angles very, very flat. Now, I don't always do that. I'm just showing you different design patterns. And this is to show you when you're doing the crown, there are no abrupt transitions. Everything flows to one area to the next. There's not a, a sharp demarcation where it goes from here all of a sudden there. So when you think about that, it's an important element when you're designing recipient sites. Female hairlines lie beyond the scope of this presentation, but there's a cowlick, there's a whorl, there's a different shape. And I'm just showing you that this is part of the artistry that you're, you're doing when you're working on different hairlines, that there's different shapes and designs. So let's go through a, a few case presentations. Uh, this is a case presentation where you're seeing that, let me see if I can get this. This is, I don't know if that, no, is, oh, there we go. Is that shiny? I guess you can't shine on an LCD screen. All right, so what you're, what you're seeing here is that I've, what I've done is I've created the uh, anterior hairline with about 251 hair grafts, sagittally. Then I've come back, and this is one row of, of one hairs with some sentinels, that my two hair grafts, my, my uh, assistant team really knows that where the ones and twos starts. So the twos uh, here I've made sagittally, except in the uh, temple area. I showed you that, that's done coronally. Then to make a, a visually denser result, I've done the three hair graphs with coronal sites, so that transition from sagittal coronal is very obvious, and my staff knows when we go from two to three. But to, to minimize transection of the existing hairs, I've then gone back to sagittals for the rest of my threes going back. And then I've taken the two hair graphs, which are not as important for visual density, and just placed the remainder. I've saved about a third of it to the back of the head so that I can just blend that back and transition to the crown. So my point of this is not for you to memorize my design, it's just to tell you some of the creativity that goes on when you're designing and also leveraging the, the sagittal coronal sites for maximal benefit. And this is just the, the schematic, this is the actual recipient sites with the sagittal and coronal sites that we just discussed in the uh, previous uh, drawing. The next drawing I'm showing you here is an example of a person that is, has more three plus hairs, greater size graphs. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm making my one hair site sagittally, about 250 there, and then I'm making with 21 gauge needle. Then I'm making a lot of, uh, I'm making some two hair graphs where I'm not, I'm making about 500 twos in the front. I'm stopping because I really want more frontal density for this patient. Now I'm going to show you the next slide where I'm not going to do that. So I'm putting more three hair graphs up there. My three hair graphs. I've made with uh, coronal sites so that we go sagittal, coronal, then back to three plus sites with sagittals, then back to th uh, three hair sites with coronal, then two hair sites with sagittal. Again, so my staff can easily place into it and I'm leveraging some of the benefits of the coronal incisions with the uh, three hair graphs. And this is just showing you uh, that design pattern there. Uh, this one is an Asian patient. And with Asian hairs, you really worry about a natural result if you use a lot of three hair grafts in the front, uh, or you use if you put too few one hair grafts. So this is, I've done four or five rows of one hair grafts, and then I've done about 12 rows of two hair grafts. That's the blue area. And then I've gone to the coronal three hair grafts so that, again, the transition can be obvious. Then I go back toward uh, sagittal two hairs in the back. In order for them, since I have so many rows of one hair grafts, that my staff knows when I go from a one hair sagittal to a two hair sagittal. I made one row of coronal twos in the front of my twos, my first row of twos, so that they know when I go from one to twos. Again, these are just things that helps the placement, and the better they can place, the, and more consistently they can place, the better your results are. But also, I'm leveraging the, the parallel and perpendicular sites. Uh, and again, all I'm showing you here is creativity. I'm not here to try to have you memorize, oh my god, he put what three? You can't memorize this. But my goal is just to teach you that hair transplantation is not a cookie cutter process. It's not just stick some graphs up there and be done with it. I'm going through some thinking process of how I've designed these sites. So hopefully they can be helpful. And 
Really the goal today is not to teach you how to do hair, but teach you the creativity aspects and the thought processes. Some people I, I was doing the hairline with earlier, they've done many of these transplants so they can get more into what I just said than some of the beginners. The beginners are gonna take home and go, okay, he's, he's painting a canvas with different types of instruments and different types of techniques. And I think that's what's fun about this. So again, remember that the angles are different for throughout the scalp and you have to respect those. And I just I ask you to think in a creative way when you're designing this and it makes uh, life a lot more fun. Okay, so let's see where we are.